From water rescues to hiking mishaps, one small beacon of hope has saved thousands of lives. Today, the people and technology behind SARSAT were showcased in Suitland, along with survivors who can tell, live to tell the tale of their rescues. Awesome. Uh, we had no other options. Uh, we were outside of radio range. We'd lost all of our equipment, uh, obviously outside of cell phone range. When Frank Brawley left on a four-foot sailboat last February with three others, little did he know that he'd become one of the nearly 7,600 Americans to be saved by SARSAT, a search and rescue tracking system that's aided by satellite. Due to the damage of the boat, we were going down and we wouldn't have been able to be rescued uh, if I wasn't able to communicate that through the satellite. So that, that beacon was our last chance. I mean, uh, there's, it was very black and white. Um, it's that or we all die. This morning, NOAA showcased its life-saving rescue operations and the technology behind it. It's a joint effort between numerous federal agencies, including NASA, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. Historically, these satellites developed to be uh, weather platforms, right? To, every morning you get up and you see the weather, and the NOAA satellites provide critical information for those things. But we've uh, been able to provide other capabilities on these satellites as well, like data collection and, and search and rescue. There's all different types of scenarios, everything from a general aircraft, that, or general aviation aircraft that went down to a vessel taking on water, uh, sometimes uh, medical situations that we respond to. NASA is here to innovate technology develop the R&D needed to improve the beacons, to improve the space segment, and to improve the ground stations. And SARSAT has not only helped rescue Americans, more than 39,000 people worldwide have been saved by this technology. And SARSAT was first developed in 1982.